Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here at the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 1st, 2020, recorded around 4.13 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated as of yesterday, June 30th, we continue to notice the continual decline of any of the warmer anomalies out here, although we have seen some warmer anomalies reappear over the equatorial Pacific uh, over the last week or so due to a uh, westerly wind burst that has occurred across the area. However, we will continue to see easterly wind bursts that come off in these strong trade winds blowing easterly here that will upwell a lot of the cooler and cooler water and really choke off any of the warmer temperatures out here across the equatorial pacific and more in particular the nina 3.4 region that will continue to choke that area off and we will likely head towards either a cool neutral or a la nina background by the time we get into the peak of the atlantic hurricane season this year and conversely, in the Atlantic Basin, we continue to see this very prominent Phase 1 uh, Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, this AMO as it's called for short. And it is in a Phase 1 configuration, which typically favors the warming of the Canary Islands out here, and also the main development region warming into portions of the Caribbean. You notice how these water temperatures here are well, well above the long-term average, and in some cases, here above about one degree celsius above the long-term average in isolated spots but by and large as an average running right now about a half a degree to slightly warmer uh, above the long-term average in celsius and that continues to extend all the way into the caribbean and southwestern atlantic basins and this is coming from Phil Clockspot and WeatherModels.com. And this is the this is just a higher resolution sea surface temperature anomaly based on a 30-year climatology pattern from 1990 to 2019. The seven-day average from the 24th of June to the 30th the 30th of June. And you notice how this very warm pattern is correlated really nicely through here. And you can even see that in this, uh, the NOAA coral reef site here, this phase one pattern, this kind of horseshoe shape pattern that is very indicative through here. And even right up in through the Bahamas, uh, portions of the, um, down there across the islands, Barbados, uh, the Lesser Antilles, uh, the Caribbean and even the southwestern Atlantic and right against the Florida of uh, the Florida Peninsula there water temperatures are running extremely warm in some cases you know about a degree to maybe two degrees Celsius in the southwestern Atlantic and, and down here across portions of the main development region running about a half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average and that's only going to continue to amplify as we go on throughout time. You notice there is some cooler spots out through here but the the real anomalies here they haven't really been phased by the Saharan air events so there's a little bit of, it's certainly been cooler over this region over the last several weeks but you know or the last week or so because of the Saharan air event but it's really not been that big of a deal uh the the main development region is warming quite nicely and if we take a look here at a different product this is the upper ocean heat content basically how deep does that 80 degree isotherm go and you notice out here once you start getting into the really the upper third these greens yellows and uh, oranges and reddish colors that's your higher upper ocean heat content your warmer water at depth and that is situated for the most part in the caribbean and southwestern atlantic basins we'll zoom in here <clears throat> and that is showing up very nicely in the caribbean and even towards the islands and in fact you know, if we have a, if we had a comparison, I, I was looking at this earlier. This is actually running a little bit of above 2017 in, compar in comparison to the upper ocean heat content values that are out across this region through here is quite a bit above 2017 where we were this time of the year in the the 2017 season. That was really one of the last like bonkers seasons. So if anything, it kind of gives this really a, a decent run for its money per se that we are seeing quite a bit of above what we saw in 2017 across this area in terms of the upper ocean heat content values. You also notice down here in the main development region, the southern MDR warming up quite nicely. Really even, you know, this, this kind of lower third, that is still pretty significant. Anywhere where I'm basically outlining where this, you know, at least a shade of blue is, you have that higher upper ocean heat content and more favorability. So, you know, really, it's it's coming now into a time where the main development region is going to continue to warm as we progress throughout the next several weeks into months. 
And again, it's only July 1st, and the, the progress that we've made in warming up the main development region, getting these this higher uprush and heat content values, I mean, it's off the charts, basically, through the southwestern Atlantic. So very warm across that area. And if you get a tropical cyclone to move into this environment, at least aerodynamically in the in the the thermodynamic sense, it will intensify significantly in the at least in the thermodynamic uh, uh, theoretical environment. So it's just something to keep keep in mind as we go on throughout time there. And if we take a look here at the actual sea surface temperatures coming off the CDAS methodology from tropicaltibbets.com, initialized as of 7 o'clock this morning, water temperatures in, in the southwestern Atlantic, 31, even 32 Celsius out here across the, the Florida uh, Gulf Coast here, right off of the Clearwater St. Pete uh, beaches there, 32 Celsius. That is roughly about 90 to 91 Fahrenheit, if I'm remembering my calculations correctly. There's a lot of math involved in this, but <laughs> certainly the water temperatures are very warm. And even out here in the southwestern Atlantic, the Caribbean water temperature is running very, very warm. So again, if something comes along to take advantage of this environment, it, it, at least in a theoretical environment, this will help to promote significant intensification, all else being favorable, especially out here in the Bahamas where that's the last thing that they need. So you know, it's the time to start paying attention to this, you know, and we typically are going to look for development in this part of the world for this time of the year. And then we typically start looking over at the main development region later into July and then, of course, August, September and October. So it's starting to become much more of a factor now than what it was back in March you know, May, and even in some cases June, these water profile temperatures only continue to warm and it's going to matter a lot now as we head in through the rest of the season. So this is like the clues to the game and even out here across portions where, you know, Tropical Storm Cristobal kind of, you know, upwelled a lot of this water. You've had a lot more convection across that area. Water temperatures are still running anywhere from 30, to, uh, you know, 29, 28, 30 Celsius. So water temperatures are more than supportive of tropical cyclones the islands out here very warm so it's only a matter of time before something comes along somewhere to take advantage of us and once it does in a theoretical environment all else being favorable it is going to strengthen so and this is just another way of looking at this basically just looking at the how the sea surface temperature profile in july so far and this is only the first day of july but how does it stack up for the 1981 to 2019 climatology uh, pattern for favorable uh, for, for the favorability of tropical cyclones in the atlantic and this sea surface temperature profile matches up very nicely with active seasons you notice this big cluster out here in somewhat of a, a kind of a horseshoe shape up through here here, and you notice that even out here you got this you know kind of horseshoe shape that's kind of pronounced you know through here so it's not too much of a stretch of reality to say that this is going to have a big implication this horseshoe shape combined with what we're seeing and, and even out here you know that's a pretty good horseshoe shape and a very strong correlation to active hurricane seasons so it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that we are going to see a very significant season on hand and only further amplify that this is taking a look here from the european ensembles this is originally tweeted by uh, eric webb and again on, on twitter and again, this is taking a look at the precipitation anomaly from now up until the 13th of the 13th of August, and these precipitation anomalies coming off the European EPS uh, ensembles are kind of startling. You know, these anomaly patterns in the in the southern main development region up here, literally on the top of the scale, about nine to ten inches anomalously above the long-term average and even out here in the bahamas southwestern atlantic the caribbean you know precipitation above the long-term average even off the southeastern coast here the north atlantic states so there is a couple of areas that we are going to watch and, and this is just kind of one of the startling details that we are seeing 
And these precipitation anomalies be about nine to ten, you know, about nine to ten inches above the long-term average in the southern Maine development region out here. So if we can get anything coming off at a very low latitude to take advantage of the more favorable patterns setting up here over the next several weeks or so, I certainly would not be surprised to see one or two systems try to get their origins down here in the Maine development region to the east of the Lesser Antilles. So again, you know, and that's not a forecast for for much as it is just looking at what we're seeing in the model guidance in the in the model field this is kind of correlating really nicely to a very busy Atlantic hurricane season and again once we get into the latter part of July August September and even October things are looking to pick up significantly in pace and you know you even remember 2019 for what it's worth we had a lot of storms that were out here in the subtropical Atlantic but Dorian you know Again, it only takes one. So the fact that we're seeing this signal, you know, pretty good out in time right now for, you know, the rest of uh, the rest of July and then through the 13th of August, you know, into the, the middle part of August is a very significant startling signal that we're starting to pick up on. So, you know, we're going to have to look a little bit more and kind of investigate, is this going to come to fruition? We'll have to see here over the next several weeks or so. But taking a look at what's really going on right now in the tropics, nothing really in the main development region, you know, maybe a little bit of energy associated with a, a tropical wave position through here, but not really seeing anything in the model fields that are going to, to try to develop anything out in here. You know, some energy trying to bundle in the atmosphere in the eastern Pacific Basin, but in over the next several weeks, the eastern Pacific should become a little bit more favorable. However, it is interesting to note, note how the eastern Pacific and even the western Pacific Basin have just been shut down this year. You know, we, we've barely seen... Uh, you know, really much even in the Western Pacific, in the Eastern Pacific. Ha the Eastern Pacific hasn't even had a hurricane yet. And, you know, over the last, you know, two, three years, you know, even dating back to 2017, you know, we saw hurricanes in the Eastern Pacific by this time of the year. So those basins have been very well shut down in the Atlantic Basin has kind of dominated in terms of at least the number of named storms it's produced. Now, the ACE index is slightly falling behind the Western Pacific and I believe the uh, Ar Arabian Sea in the, India, in, in the Indian area, but, you know, really in terms, we are actually, the accumulated cyclone energy is above the Eastern Pacific for what it's worth. And it's typically not that way this time of the year. So very interesting. And typically when all else is kind of shut down, the Atlantic Basin will typically favor, will typically be favored. And it's only a matter of time before we are green light to go for that area. But right now, strong vertical wind shear is still kind of dominating and plaguing even portions of the Eastern Pacific here over that pretty strong wind shear. But wind shear is the main story that dry Saharan air, just dry particulate matter, not really going to favor much in the way of development here over the next several days or so in the Atlantic Basin at all. And we can take a look at that here coming from the Cotton Meteorology College to page Go 16's uh, satellite viewer here. You notice uh, these pretty strong tropical waves in the intertropical convergence zone down here. Pretty moist down there, but you notice how these cumulus clouds are out here. This kind of, you know, cumulus that's not really doing anything. Very indicative of this dry air mass that's kind of situated to the north of the intertropical convergence zone, which is kind of positioned right through about here. That intertropical convergence zone extends all the way into the eastern Pacific Basin as well. But again, we're not really seeing much in the Atlantic Basin that really would favor much development over the northern portions of the MDR. But again, we're not really seeing much for what it's worth. And, you know, over the next several days or so, more kind of dry air for the Lesser Antilles over here. The Gulf Coast states even, you know, but... Overall, we're not really seeing much in the eastern Pacific Basin for what it's worth as well. We had a very brief short-lived tropical depression, tropical depression 4E, uh, 4E, the E stands for the eastern Pacific Basin uh, to the south and west of the Cabo Verde, or not the Cabo Verde, the, San, the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas by quite a bit there and that kind of just dissipated here after the last like 24 hours, did not last long at all. And, you know, we're seeing some moisture try to bundle down here, but again, it's very slow in the eastern Pacific, anomalously slow, actually. So, very interesting to see 
as we go on throughout time, how is this going to favor uh, for the next several days or so? And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we only have one system with a 30% chance of the next five days. No significant land threats for Central America, Mexico, the Gulf of California, or the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas. No significant threat to land at all for any of those areas. And just a real quick kind of analysis of things. When we typically have more tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific Basin that translates to shear and dry air over portions of the Atlantic Basin, conversely, when we have this a rising pattern in the Atlantic Basin. We typically have sinking air in the Eastern Pacific favoring tropical cyclone formation in the Atlantic Basin. So again, really and truly, it's only a matter of time. All of this rising air, this convection is more so favored in the Eastern Pacific. And even though we haven't really seen anything, that rising air is kind of there. As we get this convectively coupled Kelvin wave to pass and transition over into the Atlantic Basin, we will start to see that rising air and that convectively coupled Kelvin wave associated with that begin to shift into the Atlantic Basin here over the next week to 10 days or so. And then after that time, the main development region, especially in the southern MDR, will become a lot more favorable for tropical cyclone formation and development. So it is only a matter of time before we start to see something. And again, it complete and not. I can't completely rule out one or two systems to form here east of the Lesser Antilles uh, over the next few weeks or so as we get this area of favorability to kind of set up across the Atlantic Basin going throughout time. Now, with that being said, this is taking a look here at the GFS forecast, the 12Z run valid as of 7 o'clock this morning from tropicaltippets.com, the 850 millibar of vorticity, the spin in the atmosphere, 5,000 feet off the ground. And you're not really seeing anything in the model field, and we'll just kind of roll this out here for the next about 120 hours. And you're not really seeing much, and even in the eastern Pacific Basin, it's kind of quiet there. You know, maybe some tropical waves that are kind of rolling off throughout time. You know, for what it's worth, we'll kind of roll this out through the next 180. Maybe something out here, but again, the signal is very vague. It's very vague. There is a tropical wave that tries to come off here, maybe, potentially, uh, after the next five days or so, but very anomalous, you know, very kind of nebulous here in the model field. So we're not really seeing anything promote tropical cyclone formation at least for the next about 10 days or so but after that time frame the pattern looks to be setting up here especially across the southern main development region for a more favorable and active pattern to be setting up and in the european forecast model we're really not seeing anything either even out to the end of the forecast period you're not seeing anything Tropical wave tries to come off here at the end of the forecast period, but we're not really seeing anything that's really strong in the model field except except for this very anomalous wet pattern setting up across the southern main development region as we go on throughout time for the next 45 days. This really goes out uh, from about day 15 to about day 45. So this is kind of really looking out here. This is, starts at July 14th and ends on, the, on August the 13th. And again, you're not really seeing a lot other than this very strongly favored uh, tropical waves that are going to be coming off to be stronger than, than average, more robust, more of them. And typically when you have more African easterly waves, more tropical waves that come off of Africa, you tend to get more development in this region. So it's not saying something will develop more so as look out because again, as we head throughout the, the month of July, the pattern is going to become more favorable. And typically July is one of our quietest months in terms of hurricane development. So it's going to be a matter of time, but after about the next 10 days or so, the pattern is going to start to flip. And that's when we're really gonna have to watch for these tropical cyclones to form out here in the main development region of the Atlantic Basin. But no significant concerns to land threats at this time for the eastern pacific and or the atlantic basin no land threats at this time so we're really going to have to keep in and watch a uh, watch for live what's going on here over the next uh, 10 days or so 10 to 15 days but at this time no significant threats to land masses for either basin so that is certainly of good news Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Again, make sure to subscribe to your to our YouTube channel here and go follow me on Twitter. Links for those will be down in the description below. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening, and I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone.